Well, my name is Tracy Hansen, and I'm the program manager of the Washington Center for Women in Business, and we have this weekly webinar series, Let's Talk Business. Um, and so very excited today about our topic, Can You Hear Me Now?, all about virtual communication. Um, in this world where virtual communication is more and more important, I think this is going to be a great topic. Um, a little bit of housekeeping to get started. We are recording this webinar, so if there's something you wanted to listen to again, um, or if you miss a piece of it, I'll send it out to you this afternoon, the recording, as well as um, the PDF of Felicia's slides. We want this to be interactive. Please feel free to ask questions. Um, but in between questions, if you could mute yourself so there's no background noises, dogs barking, keys tapping, that kind of stuff um, in the background, that would be greatly appreciated. If you're having trouble hearing us, um, there's an audio panel in, a, in your little control panel here. It says audio. Um, and there's an option phone versus computer. If you're using your computer speakers and are having trouble hearing us, I highly recommend your phone, um, calling in on your phone. If you're not having trouble hearing, with a, hearing us, though, no problem. And then lastly, like I said, we want this to be interactive. So if you have questions, you have two options. Um, you can either raise your hand, which is this icon here, and it kind of lets fully sure I know that you have something you'd like to say audibly and then you can unmute yourself or or speak that way or if you don't want to do that you can type into the chat box and Felicia and I can see that as well. So a little bit about the Women's Business Center. The Washington Center for Women in Business is funded in part by the U.S. Small Business Administration to be one of their women's business centers and that's a nationwide program. There's a, a WBC in almost every state um, and we cover most of the state of Washington, and we are here to help women who want to start a business, or if you're already in business, how can we help reach your next milestone, um, become more profitable, become more efficient, grow your business, strengthen your business, whatever whatever your plans and your goals are, we want to help get you there so that you're sustainable and healthy long term. You'll on the screen you'll see just a few of the things that we cover. Um, but really, whatever we meet you wherever your business needs are, um, and you're the one who sets the goals, and we want to make sure you get there. How do we do this? We do it for a variety of ways, like workshops like this one, either online or we also have in-person ones. And then we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching session sessions with our business coach, Christine Buckley, um, who's also fluent in Spanish, if anybody has a a Spanish business owner that might need help. Um, so we are located in Lacey, Washington, but we can do Skype or phone or email business coaching. Um, the first one hour session with us is free. After that, it's $25 for the hour after that, but we do have scholarships available. We never want that price to be a barrier to your success. So if that's something that you can't afford, talk to Christine or I, and we can get you set up with a scholarship. Um, and there's our contact information on the screen there. Again, my name is Tracy Hansen, and Christine is our business coach. You can also contact Ryan if you want to schedule with Christine. Um, and I won't go over all of these. These are just some of our upcoming webinars, but I'll send this out to you guys in an email. Um, and Felicia, with that, I will switch it over to you. Okay, thanks, Tracy. I believe I just took myself off mute. Yes, we can hear you. Can't see your screen yet, though. Oh, okay, so let's see. There we go. All right. So let's get this set up. All right, can everyone see my PowerPoint? Yes, we can see it. Okay, thanks, Tracy. All right, well, I, I'm going to reach out and say, ladies, there's just a few of us today, so um, let's chat. We're going to talk about virtual communication. Um, I'm, I'll start with introducing myself, but I'll warn you now, this is an interactive session. Um, I appreciate the time that you're spending here today. We're going to use some of the fun tools that Tracy has shown us and look at different ways that we can engage virtually. So a little bit about me. 
but my name is Felicia McKinney. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to Google me and find out all those fun things on LinkedIn, um, I am the project director at a small women and minority owned company called MYS Project and Brand Management. Um, we provide project and brand services um, to a variety of industries. Um, we pride ourselves on being the support that drives success for other people's businesses. So why are you listening to me today? We all communicate virtually. I have been working 100% um, virtually since January 2012. So that means right now I'm sitting in yoga pants in my at-home office. I leave my office um, to go uh, meet with clients, have internal meetings. So I do have some face-to-face -face interaction. Oh, I should probably include the like, husband and kids, you know, the good stuff. Um, but primarily my business is run from home. I, a little bit about my background. I am maybe a project director. I also still actively manage projects and hold a PMP certification and then also have earned my master's in public administration here from the Evergreen State College. Go Gooey Ducks! So adapting to the fact that there's only a few of us here, would anyone like to take themselves off mute and talk about their background as well? So and say hello. Make sure that everybody has access to verbal communication on this presentation. Ooh. So let's move forward with this is a type of virtual communication. When no one takes themselves off mute, we say that agreement comes in silence. So right now, uh, we're going to say that everybody's agreeing to not take themselves off mute. And still silence. Okay, moving forward. We're going to do a quick little icebreaker. So uh, Tracy was kind enough to show us a couple of different tools that were available in the GoTo training series. Um, the first one is please raise your hand. The last person, or should we say the first person to raise their hand is the last person I will pick on next. Watching, watching. Sarah's up. Oh. Okay, so this is good. I don't even see the hands. Tracy, do you see the hands? I do, yes. Okay. Sure so you yes, Sarah's is up. Rachel and Lucinda, we have not seen their hand yet. Okay, well, good. So that's good to know that Rachel can see them. I cannot see them. So let's use another fun feature to see if we can all figure out where the chat box is. Let's talk about what is coming out of mouths. I mean, the background. What have you heard when someone thought they were muted? Give me chat away. I'm watching the box. Oh, and thanks, Tracy. I can now see all of the little hands. Okay, <laughs> yelling to their spouse. Okay, great. Thanks, Tracy. Okay, so continuing to just kind of move along here. Um, so what is the craziest thing you've ever heard on a call? Uh, I've been working virtually for a while, so I've heard all sorts of great things. You can go with little things like the laundry, washing your dishes, mm, the dogs, the kids. I mean, the, the list is endless. It's kind of interesting to find out when you are not on mute what people can really hear. Okay. So a few of the learning objectives for today's meeting is we're going to talk about the absence of nonverbal cues in virtual environments. Um, when is speaking the best mode of communication versus email or pinging someone, um, IMing? Uh, let's talk about some different communication tools for your business needs and then um, a culture that supports clear and transparent communication. All right. Um, so again, this is an engaged presentation. First activity is telephone. Um, you may know what this is from something that we used to play, uh, I'm going to say as our younger years, but it's possible that we're still playing this game. Um, we're going to do this mentally. I know that you're all on mute. 
um, form a sentence or two statement within your mind. State it aloud. Okay, now imagine you just said that within a meeting. And then you're quoted after that meeting by a coworker. And it's repeated by a different colleague. Are your words going to be repeated verbatim? Is the intent of the message going to be what carries on as other people repeat what you say? Okay, so taking that pause, and I'm trying to provide some pauses there so we can all think about and absorb those pieces of information. What did you learn from this exercise, from this experience? Um, anybody want to shout out in the chat box or take yourself off mute and share? Okay, so let's talk about some mental exercises that can be connected to this. The first would be, um, wow, gosh, sometimes I'm repeated and it isn't connected to what I said. My message is changing. Um, the words are changing. Sometimes even the intent with those words because words can mean different things to different people. Feelings, how does that make people feel? How do you feel as someone um, who has probably been misrepresented from time to time in what you've stated versus um, unintentionally miscommunicating on behalf of someone else? Well, gosh, I know that I don't like it when I miscommunicate on behalf of people. Um, what I am miscommunicated about, I think, hmm, what should I be considering next time when I'm communicating to make not only the intent of the message clear, but the words that I'm selecting clear, targeted to the audience that the message is intended for? So let's think about that with some communication facts. So with our lovely little pie chart here, this is communication at 100%. What is this big section right here? That's nonverbal communication. That's body language. So 55% of communication is something that virtually we don't have access to. Um, I'm going to say that with some caveats of we can always have Skype meetings and such. But let's talk about those situations where, like, right now, you can hear my voice but you can't see my body. Um, you're on a conference call. You're emailing with someone. You are communicating through other forms of company software. You're downloading a document and editing it for someone. All of those pieces are information that have been transferred back and forth. However, you can't see them. You don't know what they looked like when they wrote the message. Were their shoulders hunched? Were they glaring at the monitor, pounding on the keyboard? Were they happy, lucky, carefree? So let's think about that. The next piece that contributes 38% of communication is the voice. So right now, I'm energized and peppy, or I'm sad. There's silence. What do people hear? So when you hear peppy, you might think, well, right now I'm actually walking through my office, moving my arms and hands, energized to keep up that energy. When I'm sad and I'm silenced, my shoulders are cowed. I'm sitting quietly, staring at my monitor. I may be multitasking, things like that. Words are 7%. 7% of 100. So when you think about it, we were talking about what are different things that you have access to when you're assessing communication. Take away the body. There aren't any video calls. You're not in person. Then we're going to take away the voice. You're not on a conference call. We're going to say the words. So that's an email without emojis. Words. 
that puts a lot of emphasis on something that overall within communication is such a small factor. Your words become very important. The intent of the message that's addressed become very important. <laughs> Let's look at a couple examples. What are some nonverbal cues in a virtual environment? So let's look at nonverbal communication. Ooh, this is fun. All right. Does anybody not know who Adele is? Raise your hand if you don't know Adele. Okay. We're going to go with that y'all know Adele. Let's pull up Adele right now. Okay. So don't worry, you're not supposed to be able to hear it. We're just going to watch for a few seconds. Uh, Tracy, could you confirm that you can see Adele? Yes, we can. Thank you. OK. So that was intentionally silent. You may know or recognize the song, hello. This is Adele. Is Adele happy? Is Adele sad? Adele didn't say anything and she was on mute, but what were we able to obtain? What were we able to decode in the messaging that we saw in her body language, that we see in her facial expression? If Adele had walked in the room and sat down, what would we perceive starting that meeting? Okay, so now let's look at Bell. Okay, got to make sure we got Bell muted. Okay, so a shorter clip, but what do we see there? Let's think about that. The background, the coloring, the faces. If we pull all that back together, We see body language, vocals. Look at Adele, look at her face. Look at his face. Oh my gosh, I would love to say that the gentleman on the right is in a much worse situation. He is in stocks, he's locked up, but he's smiling. He seems happy about his situation. Adele is gray, she's black and white. All right, so let's talk about communication channels. So one of the things that we take away from this piece of body language is that it's very important because you can see from just looking at their faces, even though one of them is in a worse situation, um, that's a maybe not be how they genuinely feel about it. So being able to address how people feel in a situation and then move forward from it can help you um, set your tone in your messaging. So how do we pick those things up? One of the things to think about when you're communicating virtually is you're trying to adjust your tone to your audience. So maybe you know these people, maybe you have met them, maybe you haven't. Your communication channels multiply. So one of the fun th equations that I loved in my PMP studies were how many times your message is actually moving around. How many times is it going to be decoded and encoded as people across are moving? So if you have a team of 10 people, there are 45 different channels. Now that isn't actually probably 45. I don't think I've counted them all. But the concept is, is if you're here in the center and you're communicating, there are all these other people communicating too. So you send out a message, they all communicate about your message. Think about those pieces of communication. Why are you sending communication? Is it an announcement? Are you requesting information? Are you asking someone to take action? Responding to an inquiry. All of these things are really common places of communication within our business world. When you think about who the intention of the message is for, is it internal? Is it external? Is your message going to be forwarded? So you're on a conference call and your message is heard by someone 
typed into notes and then distributed to others. How many times have we sent an email and then it is forwarded to people that were not on your original recipient list? When those messages are heard in alternate environments by people that may not have been in your targeted space, how are they going to receive your messages? Those are all things to think about when you're communicating virtually and you can't be there to see the body language of the gentleman that may be in stocks but is ecstatic of someone saying hello and looking gray and sad. Let's talk about the formality of your communication. So something to think about are formal versus informal audience and your level of impact. So I'm approaching the conversation of audience quite a bit right now. I think it's an important piece to consider. And your formality may be impacted by your audience. When you're thinking about communicating with clients or other business entities, your level of formality may increase versus when you're emailing internally on your team or with colleagues that you're familiar with and have long-standing relationships. It's the same way when you're in person and you're standing around the water cooler. You're not gonna have the same water cooler conversation with the person who sits in the cube next to you versus the one who uh, may sit, you know, in a corner office. How are those pieces connected when you're talking about your tone and your communication? The level of impact ties all these pieces together. When you're emailing and you work for the state, it's something that can be resolved under public disclosure and record, um, which means it could be shared with anyone at any given time over the course of the history of the state of Washington. So your grandchildren may read an email that you read. Um, I'm, excuse me, that you wrote. So you think about that and you're like, wow, that may not have a very high significance rate on an individual level, but my overall communication patterns may change um, based on where that email may end up. Another way to think about level of impact is also regarding um, the decisions that you're making within your email. For example, as a project manager, I've worked with different um, governmental entities and when those policies decisions are being made, that communication needs to be really clear and written in a formal tone, the specifically targeting the stakeholder groups that are going to be reading the message. They want to be addressed in the mannerism that they wish to receive communication, whether that's a memo style or something else that may be specified by an individual group. Because the impact of your words is great. When you're talking about making policy decisions or business decisions. As a project director, when I make decisions on the tools that my team are going to get to use every year, we have to think about things like, oh, hey, we're going to have this tool, but we're not going to have this other one over here. This is where we're going to focus on in our growth as a company. That's a decision that's going to impact people's day-to-day -day lives. I may not see their body language because we're working virtually, but I know that they're going to have an opinion and care about it. So a little bit of an emotional, personal impact versus a wider professional policy one. Are you pushing or pulling your information? Are you sending information to someone or are you requesting it from them? So document exchange servers are a great example of this. Something like SharePoint, where you post information and then other people may pull it down. Are you requesting that someone respond to you? If you're requesting that a response be given, you should provide to them within the subject of the email. Think about things like you are assigned, list the individual, especially if you have five of them on an email, the date, time, the time zone, potentially, that you may be expecting your response, and what it is that you expect for them within the task to do. I expect you to provide an editorial review of this document and receive, send it back to me by end of business on Friday, June 1st. Not any Friday. End of business in a specific time zone? Are we talking about Pacific Standard Time or Central Time? Because that's where my client may be residing and they're expecting to see something by 4, by 5 p.m. their time to meet a deadline. Let's talk about communication mediums. So there are a lot of different ways to communicate. Email, 
instant messaging, conference call, screen sharing like we're doing right now, or document exchange server. All of these different communication methods have different levels of engagement with people where we're going back to, can you see nonverbals communication or not? So with email, that's where we're taking out all of the nonverbal communication and it's just words, that's that 7%. With instant messaging, you can add in some emojis. Maybe you're adding in a little bit of that tone or body language with an emoji. I'm a grumpy face, I'm a sad face, tears, well smiling. Everybody has a few favorites that we like. A conference call, okay. So now we're adding in a little bit more of that pie. We have our 7% of words, we have our 38% of voice. You can get a little bit more out of that. Like how are people feeling? What is going on? If you converse with them regularly, maybe you can even tell how they're doing within a given day. Right now, you can see my screen. So you have text supporting the words that are coming out of my mouth. So we're adding in some more again. Document Exchange Server, that goes back to our SharePoints. All right, so what are some different tools for those mediums? So I've outlined a couple different ones here, but let's get realistic. There's a lot of them. I'm not going to list them all. I'm gonna list a few that I use that I know other people use for email, Outlook, the Google Office Suite, instant messaging. Um, Skype for Business is pretty popular, I've noticed. However, a lot of different project management tools also have their own pinging or instant messaging systems within them. Conference calls, oh my goodness. The list is endless. You could be on WebEx or go to meeting, um, Uber conference, Zoom. The cool part about conference calls is they often include screen sharing options. However, you may only dial in with your computer like I am right now or on your cell phone through a landline in a traditional method. Another consideration is the document exchange server. Um, SharePoint, Box. Again, so many options on how to share things with people. All right, so this is an activity. Um, I guess we'll give it a second here. If you want to, we can talk about your favorite tools. Type it out in the chat box and send it to the group. Um, also have the option of unmuting and sharing. Uh, if you know a little bit about it, feel free to, to share how your company is using it. Okay, so I'll share with you my favorite tool. So again, I'm a project manager, so I really like project management software systems. Um, one of my favorite scheduling tools that I use in my day-to-day -day is Smartsheet. I, I really like it. It helps me stay organized. I'm gonna go nerd out a minute and say, take some of the best pieces of Excel and MS Project, puts them together and lets me manipulate schedules and add constraints and send out communication. It's also really shareable so other people can jump in and see what I'm doing to their schedule and their tasks and even modify it without a whole lot of training. So that's a pretty cool tool that I use. Um, there are different tiers for the cost. There are smaller licenses and then as businesses grow or want more features, you can add on. Um, so we use it for the purpose, a lot of sharing and scheduling materials. The system itself is more formal than some and less formal than others. I think project manage, MS project wins on formality. Um, push, push, pull, I can do both. So that's kind of awesome too. I can send information, people can go and collect their own. All right, so I'm gonna come back over here to the chat and I see, oh, Tracy, you've added that you use GoTo Training. That's the great software system we're using right now for this webinar. <laughs> okay. So let's think about culture. This is another bullet point of some of the takeaways that we wanted to have today. How do you use communication with your employees? Does it vary within teams and styles? Are there company communication guidelines? All of these things can impact in-person versus virtual communication. 
Um, it's a whole other conversation to talk about communication guidelines within a company if there's a set standard. Um, set standard may be things like, uh, what does your subject line look like within a given email? So taking that externally, how do you communicate with your clients? Do you have a set mode to communicate? So within my company, we try to accommodate the client's wishes. We have a couple of different conference call software systems that we use to support tools. And then if our clients want us to use theirs, we can accommodate that as well. So that means we can communicate um, via email or via conference call. We could break it down in conference call and say WebEx, Zoom, and Uber conference, all with the same client, depending what their needs are and whether or not they want video, screen sharing, or just to chat on the phone. When you're communicating with your clients, are there set business hours for communication? This impacts your employees when you're thinking about culture and communication. Um, how many hours of the day are you responding to emails? Um, your clients and your customers may want to know those things as well. Formal versus informal. What's the level of formality that you're allowing both directions? Um, I'm always a big proponent of the closer aligned. You can probably get some of those things. The less likely your teams are to have miscommunication with customers. So let's talk about how that internal and external communication plan align. And that goes back to the, the more closely that you're aligning your industry standards, your company representation of communication, the more likely you are to clearly and consistently communicate that. Um, as a project director, I'm listening to other people communicate. I'm representing people and their company's interests and desires. I want to make sure that my communication um, is accurately reflecting their intentions, whatever they may be in that situation. How well can other people pick up what those expectations are so that they have clear understanding of your intent and messaging? If I all of a sudden started throwing emojis in with some people, they might be slightly confused. However, others enjoy those. Know your audience, know what your expectations are, and then that way you can help enforce those things within your own communication and the team. Think about your communication guidelines as your brands. Let's set some expectations and then adhere to them. That's how you can help build relationships, trust. Ways that you can evaluate these things are a lot of self-evaluation and practice. Um, one of the things I love about my job is I communicate or I watch others communicate might even be the best way to look at it. And I can learn. Virtual communication is a skill. If you don't have it now, you can always build it up. You can encourage others and coach them to build it up. You can always do better next time. One of the cool things about virtual communication is before you send those emails, you can always pause and reread them. Sometimes a little bit more challenging when you're in person. Take advantage of the virtual communication factor. You already recognize that when you're sending an email, you only have 7% of the whole bucket to work with. Pause, reread, don't send on the fly. Make sure those typos are gone. Okay, and then here are some of my references. And then I had some time for questions. Um, Tracy, I know we're ending a little early, but I think this is kind of where I am right now. Okay. Rachel or Sarah, do either of you have any questions, um, either about anything that Felicia covered today, or maybe you brought questions in with you to today's training that you were hoping she would cover in regards to communicating virtually? Okay, well, if this changes, um, you obviously have my um, contact. Okay, let's see. Oh, not a good, not a good internet connection. That we definitely get that. Well, if that changes, if you find that you have a question, Rachel, um, please feel free to reach out to Felicia or myself. Um, but, you know, ending early just means we get to go back to our, our fun Wednesday work days, right? So watch for the email that I'll send out with this recording as well as 
um, the slides that Felicia used. And yeah, please let us know if you have any questions. And was there anything else that you wanted to add, Felicia, before we go? No, that's everything. Thank you, everyone, well, thank um, for you participating so much. today. This was great. And I hope that it gave you a little um, piece of, of how to use those different communication tools, everybody. And have a great rest of your Wednesday. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Tracy. Bye.